In this, the third and final video in the series, I test out the 150 to 600 mm lens in comparison to my own 150 to 400 mm lens. In this video, I'll be photographing birds in flight, mainly short-eared owls. All the images are taken using the OM-1 Mark II, and at the end of the video, I'll give my impression of how the two lenses compare to each other. So this is the third video in the short series that I'm doing where I'm testing OM Systems new 150 to 600 mil lens. Now, today I've come to a reserve to try and do owls in flight. This reserve is quite near me in Essex and in the afternoons, short ears owls will fly during daylight and it's going to give me a really good opportunity to test this lens out but also the OM-1 Mark II to see how it, it does for, for birds in flight, the autofocus. I have previously done two other videos, one at Lake and Heath and one at Elmley but there I wasn't actually doing birds in flight, here I will be and I'll also be testing this lens out against my lens which is the 150 to 400 mil. Now this has actually got a, a longer reach than that which will be ideal in this sort of situation because at this reserve you never know where the birds are going to be. They can be right over on the far side of the fields there but they can also be quite close in. That's where the big advantage of a zoom is because sometimes the birds will actually fly towards you and when they're doing that you need to be able to re-zoom to actually get them in but certainly this will be an ideal lens at this sort of location so for size comparison these are the two lenses side by side they are similar in size and weight but when the 150 to 600 mil is extended to the full length of the zoom it is slightly longer than the 150 to 400. It is also slightly heavier as well. Both lenses are very solidly built and feel well balanced when hand holding. The big difference is in price. The 150 to 600 mil is 2,499 in the UK, and the 150 to 400 is 6,699. So the 150 to 400 is virtually three times the price. Is there that much difference? All pictures will have the camera lens information, so you'll be able to tell which image was taken with which lens. While waiting for the shorted owls to start flying, this kestrel flew down and landed on a post about 150 yards away. This first shot was taken handheld using the 600mm end of the lens so shot wide open at f6.3. As you can see by the framing it's quite a distance away so to get a decent sized image I would have to crop into the picture quite heavily. As it rested there for a good few minutes it gave me the opportunity to try out the lens with the 1.4 converter and this shot was taken at aperture of f9. The quality still looks acceptable even with 1.4 added. One thing that photographers tend to complain about when using a long telephoto lens is that images are not sharp at the full focal length of the zoom. I think it largely boils down to what their expectancy is. If a bird is, like in this case, virtually on the other side of the field, even with a long telephoto lens the bird will be too far away. When the photographer then crops into the image by a large percentage, they say the lens is not sharp. It's not so much that the lens isn't sharp, it's just that they're expecting to get too much out of a heavy crop. To get the best quality, you still need to have a reasonable sized image in the frame, even with a long telephoto lens. Although one shorty did come out mid-afternoon, it did not hang about for long but I did manage to get one or two shots of it before it flew on. It then went very quiet for an hour or more, so there was a lot of waiting around. During part of the time, I was kept amused by this very tame dunnock, which would come close enough for me to photograph. 
Also, this linnet was close enough to get a few shots as well. About 3.30, two owls did appear and started to hunt, although they were quite a distance away on the far side of the field. Eventually, one came close enough to me to get a few shots, but the owl is still quite small in the frame even though it was shot at the 600mm end of the zoom. After a while, a shorted owl landed on a post and it perched there for about 5 minutes before deciding to take off. I was using the 600mm end of the zoom and once I had taken a few portrait shots, I decided to change to ProCap SH2 in the hope of attaining a sequence of shots as the owl took flight. I was quite pleased with this group of images, even at 25 frames per second it still gives an effective sequence. Eventually the light started to fade but I did manage to get this backlit shot of an owl as it flew towards the setting sun. I like the warm colours and the rim lighting on this shot. As the light faded and I was walking back towards the car, another short-eared owl flew in towards me. Instinctively I raised the camera and pressed the shutter. Because I had thought things had finished for the day, I had not bothered to increase the ISO. Consequently, as I was taking pictures, I could tell that I had the shutter speed set far too low. I took a burst of about a dozen to fifteen shots and when scrolling through the pictures on the back of the screen, I was amazed that I had one or two sharp frames in spite of shooting the flying bird at only 160th of a second. So now, and for comparison, I'm going to show both stills and video footage taken with both lenses. I'll also talk about the main differences between them. The good news for anyone considering purchasing the 150 to 600mm lens is that lens is very sharp even at the full 600mm end of the zoom. To show how sharp the 150 to 600mm lens is when putting this video together, I often had to go into OM workspace to check which lens had taken which image. The other good news is that if you've bought the 150 to 400mm lens, you've not wasted your money. Of the two lenses, the 150 to 400 is easily the better lens but this is to be expected. What would be the point of spending an extra £4,200 on a 150-400 if the quality was not better? On examination of images where I have heavily cropped into the picture, it is noticeable that the 150-400 is the sharper of the two. That's not to say that the 150-600mm is not sharp at the 600mm end, it's just that the 150 to 400 is better. Of the two lenses, the 150 to 600 mm has the extra reach. With the 125 extender engaged on the 150 to 400 mm, the focal length is 540 mm. So the difference in focal length is minimal. Another advantage of the 150 to 400 mm is that when the 125 extender is engaged, you do get an extra half stop of light in comparison to the 150 to 600 mil. Shooting at 400 mil plus the 125 extender, it's f5.6, as opposed to f6.3 at the 600 mil end of the 150 to 600. You may say that half a stop of light is not a lot of difference, but when the light is poor, that extra half stop of light can make quite a bit of difference. Other advantages of the 150 to 400 mil are internal focusing and an extra stop of image stabilization. Although image stabilization on both lenses work in tandem with the camera body, the 150 to 400 will give eight stops as opposed to seven stops on the 150 to 600 mil. Although this is dependent on which camera body you're using. And finally, sequential shooting. With the 150 to 400 mil you get 50 frames per second with both SH2 and ProCap SH2. 
whereas with the 150 to 600 mil you only get 25 frames per second. I say only, even still 25 frames per second is pretty damn good. All the video of the owls in flight is taken with the 150 to 400 mil plus 125 extender. Unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to video the owls in flight using the 150 to 600 mil. I did, however, test it out with a Kestrel in flight on my previous video. Link to that video is in the description. The next two shots were both taken using the 150 to 400 mil plus 125 extender. That afternoon, the light was fantastic but annoyingly the owls kept some distance away. This shot of the Kestrel and Shorted Owl together was on the far side of the field and is a very heavy crop. I did get shots of them fighting but they were always at the wrong angle and I could not get any separation between the birds. So in conclusion, in a straight decision between the two lenses, for me the obvious winner is the 150 to 400 mil. The good news is that if you have the 150 to 400 mil, you have an amazing piece of kit. And for bird photography, it's without doubt the best lens I have ever used. The other good news is that if you cannot run to the cost of the 150 to 400 mil, the 150 to 600 mil is very sharp lens, and in the right hands, will produce some stunningly sharp images. I hope you found my thoughts and opinions on the lens comparison helpful. Bear in mind it is only my opinion. Thanks for watching.